Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we've got a great webinar for you, Scan Essentials for SketchUp. And um, again, you could be anywhere. You're here with us, so we really appreciate that. Um, but, uh, uh, my name is Noraj. I am a customer success manager here at SketchUp. I'll be moderating today's uh, webinar. And uh, let's move uh, forward to the next slide here. Uh, just before we begin, a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, all of the audience members will be kept on mute. Um, but as you have questions, and I'm sure you will have questions as you see the webinar, please make sure to um, type in your questions in the questions panel over there. Uh, you're seeing that questions panel on your, on your screen with that bullet point one. Uh, just go ahead and type something. Let us know where you're from, where you're watching us uh, from, or where you're attending from. That way we can get the conversation started as well. We have a, a, a few of our colleagues answering questions on the questions panel. Um, another important point here, uh, bullet point number three here is the handouts. Right below the questions panel, we have handouts prepared for you where there's download, downloadable content. So be sure to download that content as well. So as you follow along this webinar, you have that resources at hand. And uh, if uh, for whatever reason you need to step out or you miss certain parts, don't fret. This session will be recorded and it'll be shared with you afterwards. Uh, and finally, um, we do try to create these webinars, develop these webinars for you on a regular basis. So please be sure to visit the blog.sketchup.com slash events page to see what's coming up next. Uh, now let's move on to the next slide here. Uh, we've got a really great presentation and I'm, I'm really excited about this as well. We've got Kyle Duchel here, uh, who's the product manager uh, in our building construction field systems at Trimble. Um, Kyle, um, he really uh, works with uh, the 3D capture portfolio, including the 3D laser scanners, the X7 and TX series. And Kyle will talk more about this during the webinar as well. Uh, the Trimble fielding software, scan essentials for SketchUp, which we'll be focusing on today, and the Trimble cloud engine. Um, a little fun fact here, um, you know, Kyle just got engaged to his fiance, Julie. Uh, so let's all congratulate him. Uh, congratulations, Kyle. Uh, with that said, I will pass the baton over to you. Great, yeah, thanks, Mirage. Yeah, appreciate everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm Kyle. I've been at Trimble now for uh, just about a year. And before that, I was actually in the construction industry. Um, I got my construction management degree from Colorado State University. Uh, so go Rams. Uh, I have a huge passion for construction and technology, so coming to Trimble was just an easy fit. Um, so I'm excited to share that uh, kind of passion with you guys today uh, with Skin Essentials for SketchUp. So we'll go over today's agenda really quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and introduce what Skin Essentials is. I'm going to go over what a point cloud is for people who may not know. I'll be going over several other uh, some technical terms throughout the presentation as well. We'll go over the tools that we're going to uh, have as part of Scan Essentials. A few examples and how it can fit into your workflow. I'll be doing a live demo at the end of the slides here. Um, so that way you guys can see it in motion. And then lastly, we'll take questions at the end. So, uh, but again, feel free to use that questions box uh, over to the right and ask our panelists any sort of questions you would like. So uh, let's get right into it. I'll go ahead and turn off my camera so that way uh, we don't have any sort of lag here. So, Scan Essentials for SketchUp. Let's do a quick 10,000 foot view of what Scan Essentials is. So Scan Essentials is an extension of SketchUp uh, that you can download right now from the extension warehouse. Uh, we actually have a link to that over in our handouts page. And it allows you to bring point clouds into SketchUp to model onto them directly. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, uh, what is a point cloud? And for those of you who don't know what it is, I can briefly go over it. Uh, again, don't wanna get too technical here, but, uh, basically, uh, point cloud comes from photogrammetry software or a 3D laser scanner, uh, and it captures a series of data points uh, that surrounds you. So whether that's a building or a landscape, whatever that may be, and all of those points are within a coordinate system that together make up a 3D image that almost appears to be a solid model, but isn't. Because once you zoom in, uh, you can actually see that they're just made up of thousands and thousands of points, and it makes up this cloud. So the instrument gives those points an X, Y, and Z value so that they can be plotted in space. And then they're also given a vector value to understand the points orientation. And if the instrument, let's say you're using a drone or maybe a 3D laser scanner, uh, it will also uh, maybe take a photo. And if it does take a photo, then it can also be assigned an RGB value as well. And that's where you get these colors from. 
So I know that was just a quick and dirty kind of explanation of what a point cloud is, um, but just for those who were unaware of what they are, now you know what I'm talking about when I say point clouds. So you're probably asking as well, why does this exist? Why do we come up with scan essentials for SketchUp? And to kind of go back, uh, I guess you, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, uh, it felt like 3D models were this new thing. And everyone kept saying, you know, 3D models, I don't know if we can do that as part of our workflow or as part of our business. You know, that seems too hard, takes too long. We have to have a you know, specialized guy who's trained in you know, modeling. We don't know if that's uh, attainable for us. And now fast forward to today, and it feels like every job site in America has a 3D model and we're all just sharing you know, gigabits and gigabits of data of 3D modeled uh, data with each other. So it seems like common practice today, like it's a no brainer. Well, we kind of felt the same way about point clouds. Whenever I say point clouds or 3D capture, a lot of people just assume, you know, too expensive, too hard. You know, we, we need to have a dedicated guy doing that. Um, that. That just doesn't seem like something in our wheelhouse like we can achieve. Well, with the introduction of the X7 scanner, as well as uh, the software that we use to process that, uh, that, that became a, more of a reality in making it easier for people to capture 3D point clouds. Now there's drones and all kinds of uh, areas where you can collect point clouds. And so we wanted a space where we could say, hey, you know, we want to take this point cloud and model directly off of it. So we decided to come up with Scan Essentials to use our SketchUp app, uh, which we already have millions of users who are familiar with it, to use point clouds to model directly onto and create accurate 3D models without having to go back and forth to the job site, maybe to make measurements or uh, that type of workflow. So that's sort of the, the basis behind why Scan Essentials exists now and where we are today. So again, where do point clouds come from? I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, where we see most of our point clouds coming from, from our users currently, are 3D laser scanners. Uh, this is the X7 to the right here. That's our 3D laser scanner. But you're probably saying to yourself, well, what if I don't have a 3D laser scanner? You know, uh, where else can I get one? And I got one word for you, and that is photogrammetry. So drones are becoming cheaper and cheaper and more readily available. So a lot of times we see people bringing photogrammetry data as well, depending on what they are scanning. A uh, brief explanation of what photogrammetry is for those who may not know. Uh, photogrammetry is the ability to use a drone and the surrounding buildings that you'd like to scan. And you fly the drone up above these buildings and uh, it uses the photos from that drone to triangulate its position and points. And it plots them in a 3D space based on the distance and angle that the drone is set. And then the drone saves that data uh, and it's all of its GPS coordinates and onboard data in the form of a metadata that is embedded into the photos so that the photogrammetry software can better triangulate and form a free representation of those buildings or whatever you are scanning. So uh, normally not quite as accurate as a 3D laser scanner, a professional 3D laser scanner, but uh, great for modeling great, uh, you know, large uh, areas that you're trying to map. So moving off from the technical talk, let's go right into the extension itself. So let's have a quick tool talk here. I'm gonna go over some of the tools that are part of our extension, and I won't be going through all of them. Uh, you'll be able to see a live demo here once I'm through with these slides, and we can kind of get into more depth, but I'm just gonna go over a brief interview of the most important ones, starting off with the open, import, and the type of file types that we support. So in the toolbar on the far left, you'll see the open icon. Uh, once you click that, it'll actually open up your native file browser, so you're able to see what type of files you have, um, and you can import them directly in. It loads actually really quickly, um, even file sizes that are, you know, from 200 megabits all the way to 20 gigabits load pretty quick. So uh, that's a nice feature. The types of file types that we support are RWP, LAS, LAZ, and E57. So no matter which one you choose, whether it's E57, LAS, or LAZ, they will actually be converted into a RealWorks project file. Uh, that's because that is what the extension is using to actually load the point cloud in. It is kind of simplifies it for the program and uh, kind of optimizes it for SketchUp. So uh, if you do load an E57 LAS or LAZ file and it asks you to save it as an RWP, uh, that is why. Kyle, quick question. Um, these extension formats, uh, you don't see them everywhere. Are they commonplace in the scanning world? Yeah, absolutely. I would say uh, that the E57 and the LAS and LAZ are kind of like the DWG and the IFC files of the 3D modeling world. So they are really common for any type of photogrammetry software or 3D laser scan software. So you will be seeing these quite a bit. 
All right, moving on into probably the most important tool, which is the Pick Point Cloud Entities First tool. So this allows you to uh, pick point cloud entities before picking SketchUp entities. So you're able to draw directly on top of that point cloud, as you can see here in my example. Um, so it allows you to draw directly on it using our native SketchUp tools. We actually don't have any other tools that we use. Um, so it is all native tools. And it allows you to draw directly on those faces, which we will see more of in the live demo. Next is our point cloud manager tool. This is kind of the catch all for everything. Uh, here you can change the point cloud opacity, the point size, the color, the shading. Um, if you've segmented out parts of your point cloud before importing it, uh, maybe in RealWorks or another software, you can actually toggle those segmentations on or off. So let's say, for example, you had uh, a building that had a ton of vegetation around it. You could segment out of that vegetation and just have the building itself, and you can toggle that on and off throughout uh, your building and design. We also have the inspection map tool, which basically puts a heat map uh, over your entire point cloud and model to show you how well you modeled uh, your, uh, your drawing basically over the point cloud. So here you can set the tolerances and you can check to see how well you modeled uh, on top of the point cloud. So next we have our transparency and view settings. We have uh, just a couple quick keys up here uh, for, to toggle your different views and transparencies, uh, even though you can find them inside of the point cloud manager tool. I'll go ahead and quick click through these quickly. Um, so here is the point cloud completely turned off. Then we have it at 50% opacity, 75, and 100% turned on. Uh, moving in, we also have some modeling tools uh, here called conditional blending tools. So this kind of helps bring forward the model uh, beyond the point cloud, just helps you see things a little better. So this is actually half resolution, and then this is at full transparency. Again, just helping you in the modeling process when uh, you know maybe your model is too far out of the point cloud and you can't really see what you're doing for detail work, you can turn these on and it kind of dims the model and brightens the point cloud for you. So here's kind of just an overview of all those transparency settings. Again, these can be found inside of the point cloud manager tool, but we just give those to you as uh, quick buttons up in the toolbar itself. A couple bonus features that I wanted to cover uh, too were you can actually lock in uh, a plane once you have the freehand tool or another drawing tool uh, using your arrow keys inside of SketchUp. And once you've locked that freehand tool onto a plane, you can then just trace over the point cloud. So in this example, I have an archway. And as long as I am tracing around and locking my plane, I can just trace this archway completely. Uh, what's cool too is for detail work. So if I actually go uh, above that uh, little fancy notch in the middle, it can draw that for me. So I don't have to do any of the work. I literally just pass my freehand tool over it. So this is great for maybe doing crown molding or maybe some sort of you know fancy scroll work inside of your modeling process. So a really cool feature um, and one that a lot of people don't know about about Scan Essentials. That's, that's also we have... Um, just uh, what's interesting to me here is that it's, it's all native SketchUp tools that are being used to draw over the point cloud, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Naraj. Yeah, so we don't have any sort of added tools. Uh, you're able to use every single type of tool that you can imagine inside of SketchUp, um, even some of the other extensions that you may have. So uh, really, you have just endless tools in your tool belt. Um, speaking about tools, I want to talk quickly about shortcuts. I know that we have a couple pro modelers on the line here, so uh, I just want to let you guys know that we do have shortcuts available for uh, you to set up, and you can assign whatever key you would like to them. So that way it doesn't interrupt your workflow. So maybe if you want to switch in between picking the point cloud entities and SketchUp entities, you're able to assign that to whatever you would like. So uh, just, just another way that we can kind of switch your preferences and allow your workflows to be a little smoother. So normally this is part of the presentation where, you know, maybe you've uh, dozed off, opened up another tab, maybe you're checking out your phone or something. I get it. You know, this is a lot of complicated stuff that we're talking about. It's not an easy subject and a lot of people don't really know how it relates back to them. Maybe you're saying to yourself, whoopty flip and do, you know, uh, how does this help me at all? Right? Like, how does this relate to my work? And to that, I just want to kind of talk about some examples that we've already seen from our users. Um, so first off, we have a photogrammetry example. This is a five mile stretch of highway that uh, we have from photogrammetry data. So if you think that, oh, you know, I don't think SketchUp can load this point cloud in, I'll bet you it can. It, it can load quite a bit of data. 
And here we have a five mile stretch of highway and we see users using this for logistics or maybe even just for presentation purposes because the point clouds look really good inside of SketchUp, like really good. So we see people using this all the time uh, with their photogrammetry data just to kind of view it and look at it and share it. We also have uh, people who are doing maybe renovation projects on uh, older buildings. Maybe they're doing additions, uh, other uh, type of construction work. Uh, we see people scanning existing buildings for uh, all kinds of remodeling purposes and et cetera. Uh, we also have people doing historical renovations maybe, or maybe historical preservation. Maybe they wanna scan and model uh, an existing building around them that they would like to uh, keep and, and model. We have people doing interior work. So maybe we have mechanical engineers or electrical engineers who wanna see if something will fit inside of an existing space. They can scan that existing space and uh, use SketchUp to just put in whatever model they have of that uh, piece of machinery or whatever it may be and make sure that it fits. We have surveyors and, and civil engineers using it to scan existing areas so that they can design bridges or maybe they can uh, do some sort of uh, layout or something inside of uh, existing spaces. We have residential builders who use it to make sure that you know their designs would fit in the neighborhood and that maybe would fit into a, a plot of land and designing homes. We have site developers who scan entire neighborhoods, use it for site logistics or maybe for some type of construction work as well. Uh, heck, we've even had people scan the inside of conversion vans. You know, maybe they want to install a bed or make it a tiny home or whatever it may be. So really, this technology sounds like it might be far away from you, but I can assure you that it is around the corner. So with more technology coming out soon, I mean, with the new iPad and the iPhone LiDAR scanners, with the Intel RealSense scanners, with, uh, you know, even Samsung catching up, you will be seeing this technology soon. And just like with models, you know, uh, 10, 15 years ago, when it was like, oh, man, you know, how are we going to you know, share those? How is this going to work? You know, how are we going to have this on the job site? I guarantee you everyone's going to have a, a 3D laser scanner at some point. So yeah, really, these, this is I'm sorry to cut you off, Kyle. Yeah, well, go ahead. Um, no, these examples are really great. I mean, I've never seen these before, um, but it just points to the fact that you know that it's, uh, there's a part of the democratization going on here. That you know these point clouds are no longer only a specialist tool, if you will. Is that safe to say? Oh no, absolutely. Yeah, and that democratization of point clouds. So that's a great term. Um, again, definitely with all this new technology coming out, all these scanners and sensors. Uh, I mean. Again, soon it will be everywhere, and that's our bet. So, I mean, heck, I even used it to scan my garage to make sure that my truck would fit into it. So, I mean, if if you think that you know it doesn't fit into your workflow, you'd be surprised how how much this could actually help you. So, now I'd like to move into the live demo portion of the presentation. I'm going to go ahead and quickly open up SketchUp here. So I have this model here. This is actually some horse stables up at Colorado State University, my alma mater. And uh, they want to turn these horse stables into uh, some grand, uh, some GTA, some graduate teaching assistant uh, offices. So right now it's just storage. They want to try and convert it. So uh, this little pop up here, it's asking me, hey, you've already linked this point cloud to another project uh, because that's what happens when you load a point cloud into an existing project is that it links it to it. So you don't have to worry about where the heck did I save this thing? It, it automatically knows where you did. Uh, it says, hey, you've already linked this. Do you want to load it into this one? I'm going to go ahead and click yes. So now you'll see this load in real time. This file is about 800 uh, megabits. So you see that it loads in just a matter of seconds and it loads in full resolution here. Uh, and again, my internet isn't fantastic. So there may be some lag here as I'm showing you this live demo. Uh, just be rest assured that on my screen, it is perfectly smooth. I can see everything, no problem. But if it's a little glitchy on your screen, no, don't uh, don't judge it too much because it is kind of my my crappy internet. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide this model that I already have here, and I'll walk you through a workflow of how I would model directly on top of this table. So again, I'm going to choose my SketchUp entities first, and I'm going to go to my rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw just a rectangle on this flat surface here. So there you can kind of see it on the wall. And I'm going to use my push pull tool. I'm going to press P on my keyboard. And we're not limited to just the drawing tools. It's actually the drag function as well. So you're able to click and drag and you can snap directly to walls. So I'm going to snap to this wall. I'm going to zoom out and push it to this back wall here. 
And I'm going to snap it to this back wall here. I'll snap it to the ground, into the top of the roof. And already you can see that I have just a basic outline of my stables. Over halfway there, pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and change it into a parallel projection. I can kind of walk you through some of the, I guess, best modeling practices that I use. I go into parallel that way. I don't have any sort of camera skew. And then since I want to model this square uh, based on where I first drew my first rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and change my axes. I'm going to click on this top layer, right click and say align my axes here. So now I know that if I use my arrow keys, I can lock in those axes and draw a square. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the front here, and I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to go and pick my sketch up entities first here because I want to draw directly onto this face. And I'm just going to trace this roof line really quickly here. And I'll use my push-pull tool to then just push this face all the way through. There you can see I have my roof line on that kind of lower part. And now I'm just going to use my move tool since I know that this is a slanted roof. I'm going to grab that line, lock it into my Z axis and just drag it down. So there I already have the shape of my building, the exterior of my building. No problem. Uh, I can also go in and I can uh, draw this doorway. So I can just go here and I can quickly draw this rectangle. So what's great too is like even if I draw this way the heck out here, you know, I can uh, then use my push pull tool, pull that through a little bit. What I can do is um, actually use my push pull tool, go back to my pick uh, point cloud entities first, and I can drag this doorway and snap to these points to make sure that I have an accurate uh, dimension on that door. So maybe, you know, you don't want to model, maybe you already have a model and you want to maybe just import your surrounding point cloud to uh, maybe show off the surrounding areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my perspective mode. I'm going to change my field of view a little bit, uh, maybe to more like the human eye, maybe like a 90 degree field of view. And I'm going to grab my little uh, position camera here, click them down on the ground. And now I can basically pan around and look at the point cloud uh, as if I'm actually on site. Uh, again, I can change my point cloud size too. Maybe I want it to be a little thicker um, just for visualization purposes. And I can use my eye icon and scroll around here. Again, it might come across glitchy over the internet, but I, I assure you it's super smooth on my computer. So here we can also walk through. So maybe you want to go and check out to see like, oh, you know, will, will this be able to be accessed from the side of the building? Yeah, let's just walk on over to it. It's like we're there. So tons of functionality here, uh, just being able to view the point cloud as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this sort of <laughs> not as great model and bring back my older model uh, here. And I'm gonna show you the inspection map really quick. So just to see how well I true on this inspection on this uh, cloud. So I'll turn on that inspection map. You can see here that uh, my tolerance is 200 millimeters and there's a lot of green on here, which means I did a did an okay job. I'm no SketchUp Pro at all, so definitely don't, uh, don't think I'm some pro, but I know there's definitely better modelers out there than me. But it, this tool makes it super easy just to snap directly to things, getting window dimensions, door dimensions, you know, catching roof lines and pitch and everything like that. I never had to look at a single drawing, measurement, tape measure, nothing. I drew this all within shoot, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, so it's super easy to use, anyone can use it. So I can change my tolerance here. Um, you can see that even like on the roof line and stuff, it may be red. Uh, I just wanna advise people too that if you're scanning older buildings, then you'll notice that maybe the, the roof is slanted or sagging, you know, maybe the walls aren't as plumb as they used to be. Um, just know that real world uh, buildings aren't built perfectly like they are in SketchUp. So don't be discouraged if you see a lot of red on your model, um, just because you know the building's sagging. You know your model is perfect. Uh, it may it might just be the building that's the problem. So don't be too discouraged. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, this is a nice point cloud just because it's small, easy to manipulate. I know what you're probably saying, like what about bigger files? You know I have a file that's you know 40 scans. What about that one? 
Well, I have a scan here of the Union Station here in Colorado. And uh, this one was about a 10 gigabit file, um, just because of the density that I scanned it on and the amount of scans I had in it. And you can see here that if I turn off my point cloud, I was able to model this uh, with quite a bit of detail just because of all the dimensions that I had and all the different details that the scan brought through. So really, you're not just limited on creating, you know, perfect rectangles and, you know, little tiny projects. You can do full scale buildings and full scale projects with, with ease. So I just want that to be out there as well. Um, you know, we can set scenes, we can do all sorts of things here. Um, we can also change all of our uh, colors and everything that you'd like to see here. So if we go on our point cloud manager tool, I can show you the, um, the actual colorization of the scans, so whether you want that to be in station view, maybe color coded intensity, true color, uh, whatever that may be, uh, you can change those all here. And uh, here's that inspection map again, just to check on how your modeling was. So I also have the ability, since I segmented this out earlier, I can actually turn off all these uh, surrounding areas like this flag that was waving. Um, I can, you know, I don't want that on presentation. So I'm just gonna turn off that main cloud. So that way I just have this station scan. And that really helped me, especially as I was panning around with my camera, that way I wasn't inside of the point cloud. I could just focus on what I was uh, trying to model. Uh, with that too, I want to just again mention that this exact model here, these, these uh, horse stables are available to download in our uh, handouts section. So you can download this, this exact model, follow along with me. Uh, you can model directly onto it. We have a couple other E57 models on there uh, that you can check out for yourself if you don't have point cloud data. Uh, there is a 30-day free trial with Scan Essentials through the Accenture Warehouse for right now. So if you go there and you download it, you'll get a 30-day free trial. We have some example data for you and you can start modeling today. And you can see just how easy it is to use and how uh, simple it is to import point clouds into SketchUp. So with that being said, I've seen there's a lot of activity over here on the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to the PowerPoint now, and I'm gonna open the floor for questions. And feel free to reach out to me directly as well. I have my email there if you have any questions that I'm not able to answer today. Great, thanks Thanks for the presentation, Kyle. Uh, we'll, as Kyle mentioned, uh, please send your questions over. We're gonna do our best to answer them right now. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, uh, I see one coming in from, um, let's see, uh, uh, lots of questions here. So I'm just trying to uh, pick out some questions uh, here. Um, so, uh, Questions box just jumps around. So when I'm trying to read a question, it just jumps around. So bear with me here, folks. Thanks, go to meeting. Yeah. All right. So Chris asks, what type of scanner did you use for the Union Station? So I actually used the X7, which is right behind me here. Uh, that's our 3D laser scanner uh, that uh, we sell. Um, we are a little biased in the in the fact that we uh, use our own scanners, but uh, we think they're they're great. Uh, it auto registers, auto levels, self calibrates, all that stuff. You know, I don't want to be a sales pitch, but that's the scanner that I used. I shot it, I think, at a medium density. So I was getting a point cloud. Each point cloud was roughly maybe a gig or so, uh, all combined. Each station, I think it was around 10 gigabits. Um, so as you can see, it turned out really, really nice. Um, and it's a line of sight instrument. So I couldn't get all of the points that were below that overhang or above that overhang. So it did miss a little bit of data there, but I took a couple photos while I was out there too, and I could see like the windows and all that stuff. So modeling it was pretty simple. It's, um, and Steven asks, uh, can you set the coordinate system in the field or compare the scans to your SketchUp model? So you, the coordinate system is pretty much set once you import it into SketchUp. So um, it depends on what software you use to process your scan data. But then you can you can easily move the uh, model into position that you would like to maybe do a cloud compare or inspection map onto. Um, you're able to do that inside of SketchUp. Great. Um, Robert asks us, you can snap to points. There must be noise in the point data, so slight numeric variations depending on which point you hover over. Yes, uh, that is true in the sense of like, um, if I were to snap to a wall, sometimes, uh, again, nothing in the real world is perfect. I'd love to see a, you know, a mason do 
a, a wall that's you know within two millimeters accuracy across 50 feet. So yeah, like let's say I snap to that far right point of that 50 foot wall versus the far left point of that 50 foot wall. There could be small nuances between the two, but uh, again, for most general purposes, that that tolerance is pretty pretty good. So um, it does depend on what you end up choosing, um, but for the most part, we're we're talking millimeter accuracy. So nice. Um, and that's quite accurate. Um, so we got a question here from Marco that says, is the clip box tool coming in the next update? <laughs> oh man, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people keep keep asking us about next features that we're releasing. Um, I can't say too much, but yes, we are always looking to make this better. Uh, we always listen to our customers. You know, we're on the SketchUp forums. We, we had our own beta program, we, you know, whatever that may be. So we are definitely listening to our customers' feedback, and uh, we are releasing new features soon. Um, so, uh, yes, there will be new features soon. Um, that, that's as much as I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Without, uh, you know, having to divulge, uh, you know, a lot of information here. Um, I think this dovetails the the question that you just answered, Kyle. Uh, so, uh, what uh, Matt is asking here is, is there a clip clip volume type function? A clip volume type function there, like to be able to like click on something and maybe get a volume output of the point cloud or like, um, like spoil piles or something. And you wanted to check like, Hey, here's a cubic, you know, volume of. Maybe what I read it as is if there is a section cut that you could do uh, of the point cloud. Um, yeah. You I might be wrong. You can do section cuts. Um, maybe I can jump over here really quick and show you uh, like a section cut example. So like I, I do have some interior parts of the scan here so I can go to my um, section cut and I can just set, uh, shoot, maybe one just right there, name that. And you can actually view inside of this uh, section cut here. So like if I wanted to model any interiors, I can do that here. Um, what's also great too is like if I have a, uh, a section cut through the building, let's say maybe right here in the middle. And like, I wanted to model maybe, I don't know, this this concrete wall or this, this brick wall that I see right here, um, but I don't want all this other noise. So you can actually go into the Point Cloud Manager tool and you can change that section cut uh, thickness. So uh, once you click on that display section box tool, I can look and tell Scan Essentials how far I want that section uh, box to go out. So if I only want to see this little tiny portion of the wall, um, obviously I already have my modeled entity here, so I'm just going to uh, hide that. But if I wanted to look at just that little tiny portion of the wall, I can do that using this section tool. Um, and it does it's not limited to just 500 millimeters. I can do you know 10,000 millimeters, and it goes all the way out to here. So that's a way, too, that you can kind of manipulate manipulate the cloud to see just what you want to see. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I hope that answers a few other questions. Yeah, I, I hope, yeah, that, that's what the question meant as well. Um, uh, I yeah, see that Kurt is asking us, um, how does this system handle point cloud data that has no GPS coordinates? Um, yeah, I mean, it handles it pretty well. Again, it, it can be imported. It all depends on what you use to process it. So uh, when you import it into SketchUp, it'll just give it that zero, zero, zero. So it, it'll be brought in hopefully right in front of you. But we've had people who have way crazy coordinate systems that were built into the software they use to uh, process the data. And sometimes they'll load it in and it'll be, you know, 50 miles that way. And people are like, where's my, where's my point cloud data? And it's like, oh, well, whatever you exported it out of actually sent it, you know, way the heck over here because it assigned maybe a coordinate system that is in real life, maybe it's way the heck over here. So, uh, again, it kind of depends on what software you use to, to kind of process that data and the coordinate systems that you're on. And the instrument you use, there's a ton of different factors as well. So, mm -hmm. sorry, that's not a great answer. Um, we have another question here from QC that says, for different projection of dot last files, LAS files, can SketchUp bring them together? So say that one again, the, uh, uh, the difference in... 
this is a or difference pr projection of dot last files uh, dot las files and SketchUp bring them together. Can SketchUp bring them together? Seems like oh, uh, so like. Um, Sorry. So like if you had two separate, let's say like um, you had like two separate stations, can it bring them together and to form one cloud? Um, maybe. I, I hope that's what they mean, but um, mm -hmm. I'm not, you, you can't do any sort of registration or combining of clouds inside of Scan Essentials. That's uh, all due to post-processing once it comes out of the scanner, mm -hmm. the photogrammetry software. Um, we don't actually allow the manipulation of point clouds, but um, I see that's a good question. Uh, he or she has uh, clarified it here. It says uh, um, they say that that means the different coordinate systems. Oh, the different coordinate systems for an LES and LEZ file. Probably. That's a good question. Um, I don't know if you send me an email though. Um, mm -hmm. Whoever asked that question, I can talk to uh, the developer as well. Uh, his name is Jacques Harvent. He's a uh, part of our uh, Paris team. I can talk to him and and maybe clarify that a little more because I don't I don't quite understand the question, and I, I want to make sure that it gets answered appropriately. Yep, absolutely. Um, so here, I'll, I'll put my email back up on the screen so you have it. Yep, that'd be great, Kyle. And uh, uh, Matt's asking, uh, how long did it take to register the scans in RealWorks? When we take three plus scans, our registration takes hours. Ooh, hours, interesting. Um, it's crazy. Uh, I don't wanna like cross sell on here, but we I use Trimble Field Link, which is our building construction field system software uh, that has a scan module you can add on to that software as well. And that's what I use. Um, I used it on my tablet actually, um, which is on the ground right here. and it allows you to do that in field so you can do in field registration in field uh refinement and all that stuff so you don't even have to go back into the office into real works but um that automatically registers everything together but inside of real works it shouldn't take too too long um i've used it a few times and it, it processes the data pretty quick so um that's what i use was trimble field link to register all those together and it, it registers really quickly um, we have another question here from Stephen. Uh, it says, can you geo-reference with field link? Yes, yes, you can geo-reference with field link. Um, so you can actually use the built-in laser pointer on the X7 and geo-reference those points back into any laid out points that you have inside of your project. Um, so that's a huge bonus as well if you have a model already that you're using maybe out on the job site and you have uh, layout points already established, you can geo-reference those scans so that way they're perfectly aligned with your model as well. So if you bring those points back into Scan Essentials and you have that, that model brought into Scan Essentials or SketchUp, then it'll align perfectly as well. So that's another way that you can line up your point cloud and your model. Great question, Steve, thank you. Thanks. Um, and Marco asks us, is there a way to convert point clouds from E57 format to RWP externally to SketchUp with the same Scan Essentials license, or is RealWorks license and software needed? Um, so a lot of times, um, yeah, E57 is basically a universal format that's exported out of most software, but it will automatically be converted inside of SketchUp. Um, like I had mentioned before, so if you load an E57 into Scan Essentials, it'll convert it to an RWP, and then you can actually save that RWP and use it inside of RealWorks later. Um, but to process it outside of anything that is non-Trimble, I don't know of any other software that does that. Um, I know, I, I don't think Cloud Compare does RWP files um, or MeshLab or any of those other softwares, just because it's, it's a Trimble uh, file type, but as long as you have scan essentials, you are able to convert them into RWP files. Great. Um, I think Kurt has a follow up here. He says, thank you for the answer. I use drone deploy that exports the dot LAS. I would expect that to work great. If I operate the drone inside under a roof, I lose the GPS. So their solution struggles to process the overlap images for photogrammetry. Any experience with using that platform with Scan Essentials? 
Wow, great question. Um, yeah, I have not played with drones too much. Um, I have I have my drone license, and I've I've flown drones around before, and I've used uh, photogrammetry once or twice, but I'm not a photogrammetry expert by any means. But yeah, that's tricky. Uh, that's definitely tricky. Uh, drone Deploy is a great software um, for doing photogrammetry and stuff like that. Um, I haven't personally used it much, but yeah, that's a great question. I would try and maybe. Um, Shoot, yeah, man, you just use you lose that GPS data, and then it's kind of screwy. Yeah, I would try maybe other means of scanning interiors if if that kind of if that's the route you're going to go towards for interior scans. Um, shoot, man, yeah, I don't know. I, that, that's a good question, though. Um, hopefully, GPS <laughs> and drones can uh, access uh, that data easier in the future. But for now, yeah, that's that's a tricky situation for sure. <laughs> Um, we got Tobias asking us, is Trimble looking into replacing the red laser with a green laser on the X7 for better visibility and range outdoors? Oh man, you guys are asking me all these questions about future releases. Um, uh, yes, we're looking into it. I'll just say that much. We're looking into it. Mm -hmm. I can't answer directly, but We've, we've heard that feedback before. Short and sweet. That's great, Kyle. Um, <laughs> so we got Alessandro asking us, um, uh, hi, everyone. What about Trimble Scan Explorer extension? Is it possible to get the free plugin for SketchUp? The Scan Explorer. Yeah, so Scan Explorer is great as well. Um, we are trying to bundle how do I phrase this? We're trying to bundle this together with other software as well. So that way it's more of a comprehensive solution. Um, so yes, but again, I can't, I can't say too much, um, but you can, especially like Trimble Cloud Engine using Cloud Explorer, uh, you can definitely take those and share those files with people um, using Cloud Explorer. And, uh, that's a great way to share files as well as Trimble Connect. Um, and you can just download those E57s and then convert them inside of uh, Scan Essentials as well, like I mentioned before. So mm -hmm. that's a great way to share and view point clouds uh, with people that are on your team. So yeah, that's a great solution as well. And we can definitely look into maybe bundling those in the future. I know we're, we're coming up on time here. So let's uh, field one more question here. Um, how do you work with a point cloud with no color? Uh, Iris Maldi asks that question. Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can still work with point clouds with no color. Uh, it definitely just won't be as fun or as fancy, in my opinion. But like, if you if you see here on my screen, I have one that is uh, I can switch it to grayscale, and it does all of a sudden everything kind of just like blends into one kind of blob sometimes, depending on how you segment it out and how much vegetation you have and surrounding landscape. But what really helps too is doing that segmentation instead of RealWorks or another software and. Uh, turning that off so now even though i have a grayscale model here um you can see that it, it's it's still it's still there i can still see everything you know properly i might be like what the heck are these little black squares here you know are those windows or those you know i don't know something else so it might be hard to identify certain things but no for sure you can still use black and white data um it might just take you a, a second to kind of understand what you're looking at here uh, as opposed to when i switch it to color uh, I can kind of clearly see what's going on, but no, absolutely. Um, you can use black and white data for sure. Nice. Um, Kyle, while you pull up the um, closing slides here, yes. uh, a little fun tidbit here. Corey Bell says, Kyle, love the Thomas jersey in the background. Um, hey, yeah, let's go Broncos. I got the, uh, you can't really see it very well, but I got the, the Peyton Manning, the goat back there. <laughs> let's go Broncos. Football starts today. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kyle. Um, guys, again, uh, thank you for taking the time to, you know, sit with us. Uh, you spared 45 minutes of your time with us. We really appreciate it. So in closing, um, those of us that might have attended late or might have missed certain things, please expect this recording to land in your inbox in the next day or two. Um, there should be a survey popping up on your screen any, any moment now. Let us know your thoughts, how we did, what we could do better. And if there are any other topics that you'd like to see us cover, please let us know. We really do this for you uh, to make sure that we are helping you professionally. 
Um, so let us know your thoughts, candid thoughts. We, 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 will, all, we will read all of them and, and take it to heart. Um, and finally, um, uh, we, every two years we have our SketchUp uh, uh, base camp. This year, due to the pandemic, we had to move everything online. So we have uh, our fire, set, fire chat series coming up. So if you were to visit blog.sketchup.com slash events, we've got some really great speakers there lined up um, to talk more about how you can enhance your, your workflow with SketchUp uh, and other tools as well. So with that said, again, thank you for uh, taking the time with us. Hope everyone's staying safe uh, and has a great rest of the day. Great. Thank you, everyone.